Hey everyone, it's Alan from Rhapsody Music Lessons, and today I'm going to play every song out of the Alfred's All-in-One Book 2. I'll leave timestamps for each song to make this easy for you to go through, and I hope this helps my students and anyone else there out there working out of this book. If you find my videos helpful, please hit that like and subscribe. Thanks! Okay, so we've got Rockets found on page 2. time moderately fast so after you get working on this the song is going to build up and you'll feel more confident and you can play it a little quicker okay this is sea divers found on page three and you're in c position still moderately slow on this one Okay, now we're on page four, play a fourth. A fourth, by the way, is just an interval. When you skip two white keys, the interval is a fourth. So see how there's two white keys in between my fingers? That is a fourth. It's just the distance between two notes. Okay, we've got on page six, two different pieces, the harmonic waltz and the upside down waltz. Take your time with these. You're gonna get real used to switching back and forth. They're a lot of fun. First, the harmonic waltz. You start with your left hand. slow that down for you just so you can get a better idea what your hands are doing. Okay, underneath that, we've got the upside down walls, still, still on page six. Old Uncle Bill, and then we'll go into Love Somebody. You'll notice during this piece, my left hand didn't play at all. And that was at certain points in this song where the whole rest was. See, so there's your three beats of silence. I'll just give you an example of that. Watch my left hand and watch my right. There's a whole rest in the bass clef, but there are notes in the treble clef. So my left hand rests. I play. what these rests do. Now we've got Love Somebody, which is right underneath it, and I will start with the same position.
that's it for page seven. On page eight, we've got an exercise just showing you what a fifth is. So fifths either go line to line or space to space, and you're skipping three white keys. That shows you you are playing a fifth. And like I mentioned before, the word interval simply means the distance between two notes. So this is a fifth with my left hand. Look at that. I'm skipping three white keys. This is a fifth with my right hand, skipping three white keys. So I'll just play my fifth here on page eight, which is pretty easy, but it just wants you to, this is demonstrating to you as you play it what a fifth is. There's your fifth. There's your fifth. Okay, here on page 10, we've got the donkey. And the donkey is kind of a fun piece because it's got you doing more things at once and the song is a little bit longer. Here on page 11, we've got Rock Anywhere. This one again, your songs are getting longer and you're doing more in this. This does have a repeat just like the donkey did. And so I will play this for you now. You're still in C position, but practice that left hand. There really is a lot going on. It's super fun once you get it. Okay, on page 12, we've got favorite words. And this is the first two-page song in book two. This is a real pretty one. You play this nice and gently, very legato. You're going to see slurs in this. So here we go. You're still in C position. That's a 
just getting you used to having your hands here. Here we are, page 16, Jingle Bells. So this is a real fun one to learn. And no matter what time of year it is, if you like this song, you'll be ready to play it in December when it's time to play Jingle Bells or play it all year long and have fun with it. Okay. So you're in that G position we just went over, and here's how this one goes. Make sure to hold that left hand down. On page 18, we've got Willie and Tilly. Now, this one's got your left hand playing a lot of what they call the melody, which is the part of the song that typically you find in the right hand or the treble clef. So just take your time with this one. Stay in that G position you've just learned, and you'll get it. Just stick with it. On the next page, we've got a friend like you, and they have a half rest, and in the book they call it a minimum rest, at least in this edition of the book. I call it a half rest, and these rests have you count out half the value of a measure. This song is in 4-4 four, four time. There is a half rest right here, and this half rest is going to be half of 4, which is 2. So a half rest in a 4-4 four, four piece is equal to two beats of silence. So here we go, still in that G position with a friend like you. This one's a lot of fun too. I think you like the sound your left hand's creating. page 22 we've got kind of a funky sounding song called my robot and this is where you're playing a sharp it means the next key to the right whether it is black or white so middle here's middle c or any c but c sharp c sharp d sharp e sharp look at that it's a white key so it doesn't matter if it's black or white it's just the next key up is a sharp so we're still in that G position and watch out for your sharps in here. Your right hand's got them as does your left. Sharp. 
on our next page 27, we've got money can't buy everything and you are back in C position. However, you've got sharps. So it's not only C position, it's C position with both a D sharp and an F sharp in it. And those are played with your right hand. So just watch me and listen and see when you see my hand playing sharps. On page 29, you are playing Raindrops and Hide and Seek, and you've got a lot of staccato in here. And in Hide and Seek, which is the bottom piece of this page, 29, Hide and Seek, you've got some flats. Now, just in case you forget what a flat is, a sharp you go up, a flat you go down to the next note. So, for example, B flat, A flat, here's an A flat. Look, this This is a C flat. It can be a white key, just like a sharp. All right, we're going back. We're going, actually, for raindrops, we're going to be in C position. This is a fun one, staccato. Um, you have been over at this point, staccato and legato. Legato is so smooth and nice. Staccato. Very, very short, detached. What does that mean? Very kind of choppy. And you know it's staccato when the dot is over or above a note. Not beside. That's something very different. But over or above a note. All right. So here's how Raindrops goes on page actually learn this and use it as an exercise and they get really fast with it. They love playing it fast. So after you feel really comfortable with this, you can work on increasing your tempo. And it really is down. That was super fast, but it really is a fun and very good way to exercise those fingers. All right. Hide and seek. Hide and seek is the bottom piece on this page. This one you want to take nice and slow. The second time you're going to take both of your hands and go an octave lower. So we've, we've gone over this before, but you're going to come way down here and you're already starting fairly low here. Um, you're in G position. You've got a B flat in this song. Actually, both hands. So we're coming way down here and we're coming way down here. Now, listen to this. That's a real fun one too. And boy, that's got kind of a kind of a spooky fun sound to it, doesn't it? And you get louder and you get softer because you're playing with new signs in your music, new dynamic signs. What are those? These things right here. Crescendo and diminuendo. Crescendo is when you go from soft to loud. Okay, it gets greater, bigger. And then diminuendo or decrescendo means going from loud to soft, okay? And you're going to see those now more and more in your music. Here we are on page 30 with Grandpa's Clock. This song 
gets you playing a bunch of different intervals, staccato. It gives your dynamic signs of crescendo and diminuendo are in here. And there's a repeat. And you're playing it soft. You're playing it piano, which is soft. Mezzo forte, which is moderately loud. And you are also going back to piano in this one. So you've got a lot going on in this In my book, this is called Mountain Echoes. You may have a different title, okay? But this one's a lot of fun to play. Um, and your left hand is just keeping this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, real steady beat. Whenever I have my students remember what, what G position is at this point, um, just think of when you learned jingle bells. Okay, you're in that same position. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to start this loudly, and I actually, the whole song is done forte. How do I know that? There's an F at the beginning, which in music means loud. Okay, so here we go. C position on this one, not G, but C. on page 32 and now you've got accent signs and that just means give that note a little more oomph you're going to play that note louder than the others so those little symbols you see that look like this if you can see that okay they're all throughout this piece here they are lined up they look like birds flying if you were to draw birds but those make those notes a little bit louder lots of staccato in here you've got intervals you've got the accent sign now so there's a whole bunch going on plus there's a repeat so anyway here's um papa and have fun with it and we are in g position so you're going to get out of c go back to g and here we go
of the book, you're almost done. Not that we're in a hurry, but wow. This is called The Clown. This song um, has two flats in it. So you're in G position, okay? But you've got an A flat and a B flat in this song. Gives it kind of a, I don't know, I'm going to say just a funky sound. I've used that before on my robot. And the same thing with The Clown. So now we are on the purple cow, which is on page 35 of your book. And you're going to be playing this in a middle C position, which you've gone over on page 34. But just to give you a refresher, middle C position means both thumbs are on C. It may feel a little bit awkward or strange, right? Having your thumbs share C. But it's, it's kind of fun, too, because this song, The Purple Cow, has a real neat, full sound to it, even though your hands are kind of smooshed together. Okay, here we are on page 36, waltz time. You see the two little dogs there? All right, let's go moderato. Let's go andante. So you could see tempo changed the four times I played. There's no repeat there, but that's it. So you've got a lot going on, a lot of slurs, staccato, and you're playing it moderato. Okay. On page 37, we've got three short pieces, and they are done in allegro, andante, and adagio. And they show you allegro as being a cheetah running real fast, andante as a boy walking, and adagio a snail. So you know, real fast, middle fast, slow. You've got to decide on the best tempo mark. Okay, so happily, happily running along, merrily, merrily singing the song. So I would say that one should be allegro. That one should be the fastest one of the three. 
The second one, slowly the clouds go drifting by. We're going to make that adagio because it says slowly in it. And the third one, let's go strolling leisurely. Well, strolling is andante. Look, they show you a picture of him strolling. No, allegro, adagio, and then andante. Here we go. And this is, uh, I, this one's middle, they all look like they're middle C, okay? So that was pretty fast, right? I'll slow it down to you right here. All right, let's take the second one. Adagio, make it nice and slow. Okay, now let's take the third piece and make it Andante walking speed. And that's that. On page 39, we've got the rainbow. And in this song, you've got what they call a fermata. Now, your book may refer to it as a pause. What this means is that you're holding the note a little bit longer. And in the rainbow, we've got two of these fermatas, and they're at the end. Actually, we've got more than two. Look, we've got two more here, so I'm counting four so far. We're going to hold those notes a little bit longer. So the rainbow is done in andante. We've been over tempos, so this is going to be at a nice strolling or walking pace. And it's actually a very pretty song. You're still in that middle C position, okay? So... You can, you can do it. Don't worry. Just keep those hands kind of stuck together like that. Your thumbs are sharing C. Oh, you've got some flats in here as well. pages I'm going to combine 40 and 41 because it's the same song good morning to you and happy birthday to you are the same song the difference is you've got eighth notes in happy birthday to you and you don't in good morning to you so in good morning to you you're not going to hear happy like happy birthday to you. you're not going to hear that don't get confused by that it's same words Different words, same meaning. One and eighth notes, okay? Eighth notes, quavers or eighth notes. I go with eighth notes, okay? So here's good morning to you, no eighth notes. Um, and then we will go over happy birthday to you with the eighth notes, middle C position. 30, page 40 right now, good morning to you. Page 41, we've got happy birthday to you. All right, we are really getting near the end of the book now. Page 43, Barrel of Monkeys. This is in, i oh, sorry, G position. And that's 
Spell of Monkeys, page 43. Here we are, page 44 of your book. And this is Minuet and Trio. And Minuet and Trio is really a fun classical song for you to learn or played in a classical style. So you're going to be in C position for this. And there's lots of things going on, but just take your time. And I think you're going to feel so great when you finish this song. Very accomplished. And you should. Very proud. trio it's a lot of fun and once you learn this like i said i think you're gonna feel really great you've played quite a piece there and you're just about at the end of your book and here we are page 46 the windmill last song in your book this is when you are introduced to a phrase a term called ritardando which means gradually slowing down the tempo gradually get slower that take your time get slower and that's how a lot of us know when a piece is ending. It kind of slows down. You don't even realize that, but you hear it and your ears and your brain and everything else is saying the song's coming to an end. Okay. Now, when you see the words a tempo, it means come back, come back to that original rate of speed or tempo you were, you were playing at. So you're going to see both of those things in this particular piece, along with a lot of other things you've learned throughout this whole book. Okay. So the windmill, page 46. Oh, you are in middle C position on this one, okay? Congratulations on finishing your book, on conquering the windmill song, which has a whole bunch of stuff in it. And I will see you for book three. Bye-bye.